you know, most people think the range of outcomes is this, with 2008 on one end and you know, happy days are here again on this end. The reality is that's the range of outcomes. And it's these tales that most people either can't comprehend or don't understand or refuse to think about because they're too extreme. And this end is fine. You don't really have to worry about a crazy positive outcome. But this end, these tailor ends, like hyperinflation, like you know, war, for example. I gave a presentation on war a year ago that people thought I was crazy. Um, and I wasn't saying there was going to be a war. What I was saying is, in times of economic crisis and in times of economic stress, right throughout history, war is always an option. It's always a possible outcome. And it, for the people that say, ah, we're past, there's never going to be another, you know, either a world war or a major regional conflict, the people that fail to recognize that that's not a probability but a possibility are not equipped to deal with that should it happen. And you look at what's happened today with the downing of this Russian aircraft over Turkey, these things are happening, and they're happening at, at much faster paces than people would like to believe. And a lot of this is tied into economics. It's economic stress that is forcing expansionism, it's forcing tariffs, it's forcing closed borders. You know, economics is at the root of all this. We can talk about social change all we want, but ultimately the driving forces are economics. And the driving forces are unfortunately at the moment driving in the wrong direction. So the probability of war is far greater during economic strife. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you only have to look at history to see the that. The other thing, that the reason that people don't uh, consider this a possibility is these are types of events that usually only happen once in a lifetime. And so they've never experienced right. it before. Their parents did, but their parents are gone now.